guys, Jeebs here, and today we are going to be talking about four upgrades that I think are absolutely necessary for the BRZ. Now, obviously it's going to be controversial because it's my opinion on a car that I don't own, but these are upgrades that I feel like your money is going to go the furthest. It's not going to be stuff that makes the car a ricer. It's not stuff that's just cheap that you can throw on. It's stuff that's going to be effective for performance and sound and upgrades that I think you will enjoy over time. So I got Andrew with me. He's hiding in the background. Wow. We're going to start out with, I think, the obvious, and that would be a performance exhaust. On this BRZ, it's a 2017, um, we went with the nameless axle back performance exhaust. So if you're not familiar, axle back means literally from the rear axle back is where the exhaust connects. So um, a cap back exhaust would be going from uh, the downpipe and then on. So that's, that's kind of the difference there if you weren't sure. Now, with an exhaust and with any exhaust, it's going to be to your liking. So, I mean, Andrew, I'm sure, went through several exhausts looking at sound clips on YouTube and all that type of stuff. Uh, me personally, I went with the Ford Performance exhaust on my Focus ST because I liked that it was an OEM performance exhaust. Uh, some people want a sportier looking exhaust to maybe fill out those holes a little more, which this one does. Uh, but this one is also pretty loud. Well, Andrew was saying as he went to, uh, you took a ride up to the Grand Canyon and you said the drone, because mainly around town, you don't put a ton of mileage on it, but the drone kind of annoying or? Yeah, um, 75 miles per hour roads uh, for five to six hours, you definitely hear the, the buzz. Right. Um, which got kind of annoying to right. be honest yeah but around the city yeah no around around the city it's it's fun uh, it sounds great that is the first thing I think on a BRZ that you should do not that this the stock one that they have now I think it looks pretty good I think it sounds good but it's not going to give you this uh, kind of overwhelming exhaust note that is is always there so I think over time uh, based on your taste and a performance exhaust would be a great upgrade the second thing uh, that I think is necessary necessary, especially for a Subaru um, with a boxer engine, is uh, having the unequal length headers. Uh, you can also do equal length headers, the, and, and the difference between the two is uh, Equal length headers are going to give you more top end power. Unequal length is, is going to give you more of that Subi rumble, um, and it's also going to give you, yeah, there they are, and you went with the JDL. What are they, JDL Catless or JDL? They're, they're the Catted JDL. Cat the length. Okay, yeah. So it's going to give you that um, classic Subaru rumble that we all like to hear. Uh, but it's also going to give you the m low to mid-range torque. And that's something with this car uh, that I, I personally think that you need to improve, is having that better throttle response through the mid-range, kind of where that torque dip shows up. Um, that helps uh, prevent that and, and lessen uh, your, your power loss through there. So again, something... I think over time you're going to appreciate the sound, you're going to appreciate the power, uh, something you're never going to get sick of. Your money's going to go far there. Obviously, we headed to Mexico for this. Uh, so we're south of the border, uh, just heading through where the drug cartels generally come through. Third thing I think you should add on to your BRZ or 86 uh, would be a tune. And one thing about this car that they haven't done over the years is give it any more power. They've given the manual transmission five more horsepower starting in 2017 or 2016? Yeah, 2017 for the manual transmission. Right. Only. So, and, and one of my complaints is, is I don't think the car is necessarily underpowered. I just think it's maybe not geared ag as aggressively as it should be. It's so, a little underpowered. Uh, yeah, well, it, yeah, you can always do more. Look at this. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Andrew got a tune on the car, so if you could kind of walk us through the tune, um, what it is, and then what other ones you considered. Oh yeah, so this guy right here um, is the open flash tablet I picked up for about $500, and with this you can pretty much, if you have an engine code or thing, I've never had to do it, but it'll let you know what's wrong with the car. Um, but I mainly use it to flash a stage two plus 
plus E85, or sometimes, most of the time I run 91 octane. Yep. Um, E85 for me gives me roughly about 10 horse, 10 more horsepower. So I'm making about 25 horsepower above stock. Yeah, um, and and compared to E85 and 91, did you feel the difference? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, with the video that we did on the first day, I didn't feel much of a difference, but... It kind of broke in. Yeah, I think I just might have not had... I don't know, I think I just might have not had all of the 91 completely out of the system when I, um, when we floored it. Yeah. But after a few days later, I noticed it, like, kick in. It just, especially in, especially in third uh, gear, the poles just go, like, it just builds even... I don't know how to explain it. It's just, just more really, yeah. So it's more aggressive. So it's worth it. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. So I still run ninety one, just for the sake of having ninety one, like everywhere I go. It's a lot more convenient, yeah. Yeah, but around here I use E eighty five. Okay. Um, Flex fuel is another option. Um, instead of using this, I think, not sure, but you can install hardware on into your in your engine or something like that. I don't know much about flex fuel kits, but I do know that you can run both 91 and 85 and it'll compensate um, for the differences. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, that is, yeah, for 500 bucks, there's really, I mean, this is kind of for any car though. I mean, you're not gonna get more power for, for a stock, you know, without forged internals and all that type of stuff, but upgrading the ECU um, and doing those types of things is where your money is gonna go uh, really far in this car. So that's from an owner's perspective going between the 85 and 91 fuel. Unfortunately, we don't get 93 out here in Arizona. There was a lady who I met at the gas station the other day and she's like, where can I get 93 around here? And I was like, uh, there is, there's none in Arizona. She's like, I'm from Montana, we get 95. I was like, I'm moving to Montana. That's where all the supercars are. So the final thing that I will I will say on this car that you could upgrade would be the tires. Uh, the BRZ type, or, or it's the TS. Yeah, yeah not Type RA. Uh, the BRZ TS comes with uh, Pilot uh, Sport 4s, which is a big tire for a car like this. And the reason they put those on there is just because they're a lot more aggressive. They're gonna give you a lot more response uh, because this is a performance car. Um, the feel is so much more. Tires like we're on right now are gonna deaden a lot of the feels and, and differences in the road. I remember when I had my uh, 2011 Civic Si, I went from the stock Michelins to a the hand-cooked Ventus V12 Evo 2. And that tire, I remember shifting from first to second and there was no chirp. It was like the power went down to the ground. So you'll notice that once you do upgrade your tires. Uh, and I think that that, again, is an effective upgrade. But I don't think that you should get rid of the tires on your car unless you just want to burn money and you don't care, fine. But if you're looking to upgrade your car tastefully, I think over time getting a performance tire uh, would be a good idea. Or if you're in an area where it snows, save these for the winter and get a summer tire. That's another idea that you could do and that'll extend the life of both of them. Going with that, if you live in like a snow area, I, I can't speak for um, winter users, but i probably choose a dedicated winter tire because yeah. I, mean, I don't know if it's like the same thing, but in the rain, this thing slides super easy. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So I can only imagine in snow that it'll just be even worse. Yeah, and I can speak to that because I grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, I went to college in North Carolina, so I had the Ventus V12 Evos and Evo 2s on my SI, and when I brought it home from Christmas, of course, my friend and I were screwing around and uh, I was flying up this back road and took an off-camber turn and because it was so cold outside, the tires just didn't grip and the car just spun out. Um, I was going too fast, but if it was summer, it wouldn't have spun out like that. Uh, so that's another thing is temperature. Pay attention to that um, on your tires. But yeah, so that kind of concludes uh, the video. Those are the upgrades that I think where your money would go the furthest on your BRZ. Those are upgrades that Andrew's done on his car. So I wanted to have an owner be able to speak to it to give me some credibility. Um, but we're just on a back road right now where this car is, is so fun. And the road that we're currently on is always closed off. I can hear the pops out the back. And that's part of the tune. That's like an option within the tune. Yeah, um, 
I use software to adjust some values. Which, oh god, that's a good, that's a good corner. Yeah. Anyways, I followed some tutorials on YouTube and just used their guide. So, man, that's amazing. Yeah. No, it's, it's, and the car corner is nice and flat. Oh my god. Just the driver's position compared to my ST. My ST, you sit up so high. Uh, this is you're just on the road. You get to really feel everything, and that's so. I guess something I can add to this. That's why I didn't talk about chassis or suspension. Is because this, where all the R and D went into with this car, is in the chassis and suspension. It's very good. It corners flat from the factory. And I just don't think that you need to mess with it. Uh, they do offer some performance suspension upgrades. They offer uh, socks, so, yeah, socks, dampers. Uh, so you can get those. You know, there's some some things they offer from the factory that you could upgrade. But I just think I don't know that it's really worth it. So that's that's my opinion. Uh, interested to see what all of you think in the comments below. Um, if you're new to the channel, I do car reviews. I'll do things like this with other cars, but mainly I'm focused around my <laughs> Focus ST. And um, <laughs> there we go. That's just nice. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, yeah, I mean, I, I do a car reviews, car news, uh, upgrades on my Focus ST, updates on my Focus ST, uh, all kinds of things. So I'd appreciate if you'd give me a shot, subscribe. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. Um, and that's about all. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Almost missed the gear.